What is all about this? A hint. You can see in the bottom. A very contentious yet disruptive patent registered in the year 1997, almost 25 years ago, which helped the huge success of Amazon at the early stage. So what is this all about? Look at this. It's called one click pattern. If you are not familiar with the patent, you couldn't imagine this one click button is fully protected by patent. The patent that I introduced in the previous slide is about this one click pattern. For you, you are the heavy user of net shopping or the e-commerce. You may think you could witness and you could use this one click button on all of the all the uh, e-commerce platform. But look at the, uh, the news article on the right hand side. You really, you can never imagine that the, uh, those one click patent can be used by other the uh, e-commerce platformer until 2017. As such, the patent technology surrounding you almost everywhere. Why I say this patent is contentious? Because Almost all the uh, IT company back in 1997 could develop this one-click IT. And most of them thought it's a kind of the, uh, already common sense. But no one registered those icons. And Amazon sold the, uh, the market potential in registering the, uh, this one click patent and decided to move first. And they succeed. And how about consequence? As you can see in the, the left hand side, this patent contribute 5% increase in annual sales, meaning that. Amazon could never be so popular, at least until the, uh, the millennium, without this one quick icon. Again, system itself is really gen genuine and the, uh, very popular. Just to put the, the system on the slide before and uh, put the icon on it, But this will astonishingly enhance the user experience to buy something on the uh, internet e-commerce platform. If you will be interested in the, uh, the pros and cons and the impact of this particular so-called one-click button, you can visit the link the, uh, I introduced on the left from the uh, Walton School, University of Pennsylvania. So now I'm not sure whether Amazon Go is operating in Malaysia or not, but the, uh, you can predict Amazon, the, uh, it's strategically planning to open Amazon Go for five, five years before they actually launched the Amazon Go first to be a commercial shop. Look at it. This is the 
underpinning technology of the Amazon Go. Amazon Go, the uh, enabling technology, is a kind of the name under the, uh, the nickname of Grab and Go. Even though you were still at the early 20, you could remember, you can remember the term Grab itself was very popular even 10 years ago. But they used this as a kind of a very catchy word here for this enabling technology. If you will carefully observe the, uh, the drawing on the right hand side, you will immediately understand the, uh, this image is substantialized and the, uh, to make it happen as Amazon Go. No special modification. Amazon carefully the, uh, testing the feasibility of this idea and successfully start Amazon Go itself. Of course, despite the, uh, the hype around the, uh, their implementation at their launch, the Amazon Go itself is still suffering the, uh, some problem and some challenges and could not achieve the, uh, the performance the, uh, as Amazon expected at the very beginning. But the point here is not whether the uh, Amazon will succeed or not. Later, you can predict what Amazon planning to do in 2013. While Amazon officially the, uh, launched the Amazon Go, in the real world, it's the late 17 or early 18. As such, even though you cannot understand the text and the document and the patent, but if you can check the drawing, you can imagine the, uh, what this particular, particular company is planning to do in the future. So, when it comes to the text of the patent itself, you may say it's a kind of the alien world, but if intuitive understanding will be enough or more than enough, all you have to do is just to read and the, uh, just to grab a kind of the, uh, the image of the technology, how a company try to apply this technology. Okay. As such, again, patent is not a kind of technical word. There are, it's an image of future innovation. Of course, to start something new, we need to have at least new technology, more or less. And patent is a document the, uh, protecting and the, uh, disseminating those new technology. And if you are curious now, how new business idea will be enabled by new technology, I strongly suggest to make it a kind of habit if you are assigned to develop new business of the, uh, the innovation project or something. And as such, even if you don't have any technical knowledge, you can understand of the, uh, the content of many patents and can use a document as a textbook. Mulai and the little textbook to design product by a certain component. Now I will brief the, uh, this particular patent, US 102482290B2. The title is Fantasy Sports Simulation Game System and Method. Alpha, can you click the link?
Okay. If you just read abstract, probably you cannot imagine what is this all about. But if you will scroll carefully and go to the bottom of the abstract piece, you can find this particular invention is for preventing cheating. If you are game lover, SNS game lover, and the, uh, to put the considerable money for the game, you may be irritated to witness a kind of a cheating behavior. Those cheating behavior prevent the other game members the, uh, put extra money because they may feel the sense of the, uh, the abuse and they uh, lose the motivation to invest in more money. So, you can say, and the, uh, you can witness the second or the third exhibit, how the uh, system can prevent the cheating. Yes, and this is a flow of the system, how game system can prevent the cheating behavior by learning the uh, unusual behavior, detecting the uh, unusual behavior, by setting some threshold about the number of the, uh, the pushing or the number of the touching or something like that. Okay, so I sincerely hope you will try to read only one the pattern the uh, before graduation at least and i intentionally choose the uh, ai related pattern but if this document is too technical for you you can visit and you can find some other patent which protect new way of sightseeing or new way of praying, or new way of the hobby, or something. You often hear the importance of the innovation, or the, uh, the importance of the new product development, or the uh, image of the new business itself. But for those who doesn't have enough experience to do real business, it may be very difficult to have an image how this new particular product or new business But if you will make it a kind of habit, even just to read and the, uh, to see the, uh, the exhibit in a patent, probably you will have more concrete image of the new product it's all about. Okay. So, uh, go back to the slide that's again. So far, I am talking about the uh, individual pattern. But, Analyzing pattern is not conducted only the, uh, for each pattern. Better, we can make the more sophisticated and the uh, more holistic analysis. It's called IP landscape. The World Intellectual Property Office, in short, white ball, described what is patent IP landscape. A patent landscape normally seeks to answer specific policy or practical questions 
and to present complex information about this activity in a clear and accessible manner. And father say, industry has long used patent landscapes to make strategic decisions on investment, research and development directions, competitive activity, as well as on freedom to operate in introducing new product. Probably among these terminology, the term freedom to operate may be new to all of you. But this is very important here when you do some business. Even if you will be able to think up new business idea and successfully launch the uh, new product, if your new product will touch the, uh, the patented technology by others, you are violating the uh, the IP right held by other company, your competitors sometimes. So almost all the company has to make sure new product will not touch or will not at least potentially violate or breach other patent. And if the company successfully makes sure no potential or uh, no risk for breaching the uh, existing patent, it's called freedom to operate or FTO. When you will work for some of the industrial or the manufacturing company and to be involved in the uh, strategic decision making, you may often heard this term freedom to operate. This is very crucial concept in order to do some technical innovation yeah, to market new product. If you fail to check this, you are always jeopardizing your own new product. And at worst case, you have to stop selling the creative new product. So going back, you can now remember the one click pattern. I told you every other company could develop same iPhone, but Amazon already registered that one click icon. So if they, the other competitors in future the similar type of the one quick item. They are violating freedom to operate held by Amazon. So they have to have only two options. One, to look for other way to enhance customer experience or to pay loyalty to Amazon. So, you are told at the graduate school or the business school and the uh, thinking to be the, uh, the executive of the uh, industrial company or the innovative company. And the tasks the executives are supposed to do is those strategic decision making and the, uh, the strategy development and the competitive analysis. And if you decided to study at the business school and the graduate school in order to let you be involved in those very crucial decisions, <laughs> why you don't study that? That's what I want to stress before moving into the main part. So, again, patent is not so difficult. If you make it a habit just to see the exhibit, but even if you don't like to read each patent, 
you can help your future company, your own business by doing IP landscaping. So, here is the, uh, the potential use of the IP landscaping. First, making strategic choice about R&D budgeting. In what technology area the a company intensively spend their resources? And second, knowing technological orientation of the competitors. Let's say, you may not think if you don't know Amazon Go patent and you are living in the year 2013, you may never think of Amazon is very serious to launch their physical store because at that time, the yeah, many ordinary people think Amazon is the uh, a giant in e-commerce. But they never say they pursue to be the uh, number one in e-commerce. So technological orient knowing technological orientation means what the company is trying to transform themselves and the, uh, in what market area they are willing to move on and they are, they are willing to moving into it. Into. And third, pinpointing the technological area where they can build a competitive advantage. This will be most relevant and the common practice. If company want to build core competence, more precisely core technique, technological competence. For instance, the, uh, I'm not sure the uh, Malaysian situation, but the, uh, in Japan, there are several, the, uh, public utility company are operating, the gas company or the electricity company. And all of these public utility listed company have their own R&D strategy. And it may be very contrasting. One of the, the uh, electricity giant are investing their resources in blockchain technology. While others are spending most of their resources for effective use of the uh, electricity transmission. Meaning that one company will spend more money the, uh, to make their existing business more sustainable and other company choose the way to diversify and to transform their business in suitable for new AI era. You can do with the patent data if you are capable to conduct IP landscaping. And four, you can find promising collaborator. Probably you may have several times during your class here about open innovation. And probably at the theoretical level or at abstract level, you can understand what the open innovation is. But imagine if you are assigned to decide or at least look for potential collaborator, how you will choose those collaborators?
you prefer the company you friendly is working on, or you may choose the uh, some of the very major company the uh, who has strong brand equity. But in the real world, open innovation and finding the good collaborator should be underpinned by technological companies, usually. Let's say, for instance, why pharmaceutical companies are always very active in doing the uh, collaboration with the university startup simply because those university startup, r and startup have their own and the proprietary knowledge and the technology which can be potentially marketable in the future. If pharmaceutical giants do not have those information, open innovation could not prevail at the disseminated in the pharmaceutical industry. And you need to develop your own strategy and the vision and the uh, in which market you would like to compete in the five years. And then you will have the, uh, some kind of image of the future product. And then you will look for the uh, demanding technology or the the lacking technology or something. And in this line, I can tell you another very famous story. All of you must know Intel. Intel is also very famous at least until 2010, a very famous and a very successful open innovator. And everyone think Intel is the, uh, the company having deep tech and the advanced technology. And when you have that image, you may naturally think Intel has very strong and the uh, efficient and the uh, very challenging the IT around this strategy, but they never. Until 2000, Intel did not have their own around this strategy. What they did is to have clear image of the new product and the uh, pinpointing and identifying the uh, available technology and the lacking technology. And instead of the, uh, developing r and their own r and strategy, they first look for the technology, the lacking technology enabling the new product and to see whether some others are already developing or already registered the relevant patent or not. And then Intel identified the really lacking technology and they will decide to develop on their own. This is the real practice of open innovation, especially in the, uh, the industrial, the innovative company. And now, as a kind of extension of the whole merit, you can easily imagine the IP landscaping can be used for finding the promising amount of data. Amount A is a part of the open innovation. So, if you can find a good collaborator through the IP landscaping, you can 
the use the, uh, the output from IP landscaping for finding good uh, uh, M&A target. Again, you may have the strategic behavior and actions listed on this slide, but some of you may not have clear image how they will do it. But as I just told you, if you will make it a kind of habit the, uh, to check the uh, pattern and the uh, to evaluate the uh, technological feature, as well as the, uh, their run image, usually proxy by copyright. You can have more real and the complete image of what you run so far. Okay. So, hope you will reduce your mental hurdle to leave and the uh, to play with IP, intellectual property. As a just kind of the uh, example, this slide shows some pieces of the patent landscape report. I used the case of Amazon in this slide. On the left, this pie chart this slide the a technological cluster built by Amazon. In the green zone, you may find the term karaoke. You never imagine why Amazon is investing in karaoke technology. I'm still not sure of course, I didn't check the, uh, the detail of the, uh, the relevant technology, but so far, I never seen the, uh, the sum of the, of course, the, uh, some voice recognition is a part of the karaoke technology, but if you will critically examine the, uh, the recent the registered technology in this particular area, you may have some image what Amazon is planning to do next by creating the uh, exploiting the uh, relevant technology. And if you are convinced yourself that the uh, Amazon can be the future competitor of your universe, of your company. Let's say you are the owner of the karaoke the, uh, shop. You have to imagine how Amazon will compete in this new market. And you have to think up your yeah, way to compete with Amazon. And on the right-hand side, This chart will describe the uh, which pattern we have, or the which type of the uh, technology earlier benefited the Amazon and they help Amazon a lot. As you can see, the vertical the uh, axis the uh, present competitiveness, meaning that the power relative to other competitors. This competitiveness is measured and calculated by referring to the number of the citation. Citation means like the, uh, the references in academic paper. If someone invent really drastic the patent and the, uh, the following patent has to refer the, uh, those incumbent patent and to convince the patent examiner how different from those existing disruptive patents. So you can see the uh, 
the brown and the uh, mostly the uh, the technological area on the left of we have the uh, strong competitiveness although the number of the uh, the patent classified in this area is relatively low this is patent competitive analysis although it's still at the introductory level and you don't need to understand you don't need to have the uh, in-depth knowledge about what each technology or the each patent is all about because once you graduate start to work at the company you don't need to worry the, uh, to ask the, uh, something that you don't know to expert. But in order to be very good business analyst, after having the lecture from the expert and the providing the current Amazon competence, you are expected to imagine the next action potentially conducted by Amazon in a particular light up in the uh, specific technological cluster. Then you will be really innovative and the competitive business person. Okay. So, this is my recommendation for future executive. I sincerely hope you will read with this mindset first. Innovation and intellectual property cannot be separated. And second, you must learn the importance of innovation and the intangible asset, brand technology, know-how, anything for sustainable growth. However, you may not have complete image of innovation. You can point out some new product, but if I ask what is new, probably you may have trouble in answering it. So, for this reason, I am guessing the uh, remembering my days teaching the uh, the undergrad student and the uh, the student studying at the graduate school here uh, of economics. Many students may be inclined to focus on marketing innovation or business model innovation, with which you can surrender for technological consideration. But if you are capable to conduct IP landscaping or holistic analysis, you are ready to dive into the technological innovation. And third, once you are familiar with reading patent or at least the uh, checking the drawing in the pattern. You have a picture of what technology, the what technological innovation is all about. Again, going back to the uh, the first the uh, one click pattern. Oh. This slide will be shared later by from the Dr. Alpha, so you will debut the uh, older material later on. But the, uh, just imagine the uh, one-click button. Again, I told you, similar icon can be easily created and be uh, put on the uh, e-commerce site by other competitors. And you never think one click icon is a technology or invention. 
but in a practical sense, that's technology. And that's a techno technological innovation. So viewing at least some of the very famous here, again, you can have your own images, what the technology is, what the technological innovation is about. And fourth, AI will help you analyze the patent as a whole and propose strategic choice, even without knowing the detail of each patent, like I showed you in the previous slide. You can put, you can download the patent data from public via the portal site of one particular company. And the, uh, if you already created some kind of corpus helping the uh, technological clustering and the asking the uh, GPT, I want to create and the, I want to conduct IP landscaping, chat GPT will help you to develop the, uh, or at least to propose the idea for visualization. And finally, I discussed the, uh, my idea and my concern the, uh, in the morning session with the, uh, the management team of AGBS. I know, and I heard many, many times, the Malaysian government is committed to moving toward innovative country. In innovative country, those who can analyze and make decisions both from technology and the Malaysian perspective should be implemented. But based on my observation so far, the uh, Malaysia is still lacking those the uh, multi the uh, dimensional views the uh, human resources. Some are too technical. Some are too managerial not so well balanced. So I hope the, uh, to be more familiar with the, uh, the concept of innovation and the, uh, to have the uh, immediate flows in the sense you can take one new product from technical perspective as well as manage all the commercial perspective. This is what I want to give from me as a message, as a future business leader in Malaysia. Okay. Then move on to the, uh, the research more formal part of my lecture. As you can see in the title slide, my today's lecture talk is created about systematic literature review on the, uh, the use of the patent analytics in innovation field. Before talking about the details, I will share the, uh, the motivation of this research. A few years ago, maybe five or six years ago, I was eating dinner. The vice president of the other Gradibate. Gradibate is one of the uh, global biggest intellectual property data vendor, formerly Thomson Lawyer, and the owner of the Web of Science. And one of my friends, best friends, the, uh, knowing each other more than 20 years, while working as VP in sales. When we are doing chit chatting, he casually asked me, Flo, occasionally I have a chance to read academic paper which features patent analytics. And he honestly confessed me, 
But I am not sure why these papers are published in top journal. And I ask why, of course, because many of the paper of behaviors are a database, the company's database, and featuring their analytical tool and say something. And he said, I believe academic paper should be truly innovative. And the uh, creator, the, uh, some, the, uh, something new to the output from our database and your service. I couldn't answer to him. And then on the way back, I've been thinking how to make the academic research more unique and the more than reporting the output of the existing, the very reputable commercial database and the commercial service. And start this business, the project. And to understand whether it's a kind of antithesis, but I, want to, I wanted to tell him commercial database is delivering only the, uh, the more time to say or something like that. <laughs> That's my true intention, but yeah, unfortunately I'm still on the way. And after that, I decided I was assigned to conduct the uh, international joint research with the, uh, the talented young researcher from ASEAN country Dr. Alpha is one of the members. And as I just told you, the academic paper featured in a top academic journal is far below the quality conducted and developed by top company. And he, my friend told me, if he has someone the uh, patent expert working at the largest and the uh, patent oriented company will report the, uh, the academic paper as it is. His seniors or her seniors or executive will suddenly ask the person, what is this all about? No implication or something. But although I admit the academic achievement published in the uh, academic journal may not be satisfying the, uh, the patent expert or the seniors at the largest company. It may be very important to help youngsters in the, uh, to help the, uh, the developing country to in order to have a yeah, good benchmark, how to conduct patent analysis, in order to accelerate innovation. Okay, then move on to my main body. First, I repeatedly mentioned and refer to patents, but the first and the most important question is, we are talking about innovation, but how to measure innovation? As you can see in the image, idea can be the innovation performance or the implemented process can be an innovation performance, the number of the new product developed, it's the number of the, uh, the proxy, can be a proxy of innovation. Or someone say, inspiration itself is a product, product of the innovative activity. But in academic field, it's common to use patent document as a proxy 
and the reliable and the legal proxy of the information for innovative activity. But we know that I am saying patent can be a proxy for innovation only when I like paper, academic paper, and never be confused. If you will attend the uh, meeting tomorrow, I will deliver you different meaning of the different concept of innovation, which reflect my experience. But again, here, please be know that I am saying patent is very good proxy of innovation, innovative performance, which is accepted in academic concept. So why we choose to use patent to understand it, to use as an innovative measure? Because the reason is very simple. As you can see in this slide, patent information and the patent document is filled with many, many uh, information and the uh, different to many dimensions. At the top, you can, we can see the, uh, in which company, in which country a patent is registered. It may be registered in the United States, it may be registered in Japan, or it may be registered in more than four or five countries. And we also need to see the number. The number shows us the, uh, how impactful a particular patent is. Because number is the uh, allocated by order. So smaller number means older patent. So if we trace the uh, which patent number the, uh, the following patent is referring to, we can see the impact. And like the uh, patent number, we can also identify the date when a company applied, when they filed. If you will be more familiar with the patent, you may understand why dates will be very important. Because notice simply think, company apply patent assuming to register all the applied document, but never. They just secure, or they just prevent their competitors to apply similar patent. So no need to register any patent necessarily. It's very tactical, the action, but the uh, work to investigate the, uh, the competitive behavior made by the industrial company. And we also identify who invented this and the who hold the light. And we also know the uh, patent classification like the uh, JC, JS code, they uh, put it to the academic paper or something, and citation data as well. And in addition to the uh, text data, the, uh, as we stress so far, we may have image, the drawing, so that you can have the uh, quick look and the quick image of the, uh, what this particular technology is about. Providing that, we think the literature has examined numerous patent database and techniques and tools, but the absence of the guidelines for the uh, patent analysis beginners. 
In saying so, I am assuming my co-authors, as well as those who will start their patent analysis implementation in developing country. So in order to develop and the, uh, the propose the uh, future guideline for the uh, patent analytics layman's, we decided to start our project from the systematic literature review. To achieve this, we prepare five research questions. First, which data science framework or process are featured in patent analytics in the literature? Second, which techniques or algorithms are prevalent in patent analytics in innovation field as well? Third, which database serve as a primary source for patent analytics? And fourth, what tools are frequently employed in patent analytics? And fifth, what business of strategic insight of visualization are produced from patent analytics? And finally, to what extent are big data and cloud computing platform applied in patent analytics? Although this is not a comprehensive list, but if we can summarize and the, uh, to share with the, uh, those researchers who are planning to apply and the, consider the uh, patent analytics in the near future, they may follow the, uh, the proposed the, the guideline using the proposed guideline. like my co-authors. And in doing so, we decided to conduct systematic literature review, not traditional literature review. Probably many of you already learned the differences between systematic literature review and the traditional literature review. But as a kind of a, a quick review, I will briefly mention about the, uh, the sharp differences between these two. As you can see in this, we are applying the systematic approach. The reason is very simple. In order to avoid of a personal bias. Because just remember our intention, our objective. We want to deliver guideline based on the existing knowledge. We are not intended to propose best practice. We think that we plan to, we try to avoid our subjective bias. So in order to do that, probably SLR will prevent us from choosing some specific papers on some specific document as an important one or someone not less important or something. So you can see the uh, the contrast between SLR and the traditional review. So first, SLR will provide as a complete list as possible of the, all the published studies related to a particular subject area. On the other way around, traditional literature review paper provides an overview of the research finding on a particular topic, not complete list. And the advantage of the SLR is, as you can see in the middle, we can think about research finding in a transparent and reproducible manner. The key is 
the protocol with inclusion and exclusion criteria. Meanwhile, traditional review is also helpful in some specific contexts because it can produce insightful and valid synthesis of research literature if conducted by the expert. Because instead of doing the, uh, the paper search in a transparent and reproducible way, traditional literature review trust on the insight and the experience and the, uh, the critical competence of the author, I mean, the, in this case, expert. Even though the referred paper are, the selection of the papers are somewhat biased. And how about this advantage of SLR? When the scope of the study required data set which is too large for manual review, probably we will not be able to conduct the uh, good apply the good and the uh, convincing inclusion and exclusion criteria. We have to rely more on the, uh, the AI and the uh, at least so far with, with which we cannot confident. And how about this advantage of the traditional review? As I am telling repeatedly, it's vulnerable to unintentional or intentional bias in the selection. So, although SLR may be colorful, but more and more you read SLR, more and more you will feel bored because SL do not want to say something and do not create some story. Later, you can understand what SLR is more like the showcase or the catalog of the uh, one specific research field. And as I just told you, I want to, we want to deliver some guideline and the uh, as a preparation for developing the guideline, we decided to choose SLR, Consoling Pros and Cons. And in doing so, we are featuring the uh, well-established uh, data science process. It's called the uh, CRISP-DM. It's abbreviated version of the name plus industry standard process for data mining. I was surprised many of the, uh, the business school students never had this term, risk TM, although it is very popular in IT field or AI field or even in the uh, data scientist field. I heard AGBS currently the, uh, transforming the, uh, some their curriculum and the uh, two feature and the uh, two let the AI content and the uh, two let the, uh, the student more capable of the use of AI or the machine learning. So at least the uh, the graduate has to know this. The, uh, the framework of crisp DM. What this framework is saying is not something new, it's a very basic one. As you can see on the light, crisp DM divided the uh, data mining process into six, starting with the business understanding and with the deployment. The first phase is actually what you are learning and the, uh, the teaching and the doing. 
understanding the needs and the commercial goal for the data mining project. And once you understand the business understand, finish business understanding phase. So in other words, and using the uh, research methodology in social science term, it can be interpreted as identifying the business dilemma. And then the process move on to data understanding phase. In this phase, we were supposed to understand data and its features that will be used in the project. And once you finish data understanding phase, you will move to the uh, data preparation. Here is most laborsome the other phase among the entire process. Data cleaning, converting, extraction, or modeling, or something. Of course, we did this together, but I never recommend the uh, business school student will do by their own if you are not so familiar with the uh, machine learning or the uh, algorithm, yeah, you will leave it to someone who are capable to do the uh, machine learning of the, uh, the database development or the relational database expert. And after that, we will move on to modeling phase. Here, the, uh, we will choose and decide which data mining model will be used and how to train it. And once we complete modeling, we have to evaluate the, uh, the performance of the model. And but if we will be able to validate, uh, make sure the validity or the, uh, the usefulness of the model, we will be successfully deployed. This is crisp DM. And almost all the IT projects are conducted and designed based on this here framework. And we classify the uh, all the available literature following this the crisp uh, DM the uh, phases each by each. And we show the focal point of each paper and categorize and the, uh, the count the number of the focal points. And as you can see, there are no, not so many paper which argues business understanding part and the data understanding part. My co-authors were really surprised, but the lack of the paper stressing the business understanding is easily expected for me. Why? Because, as I just told you here at the kind of episode about my conversation with my friend, the patent analytics appeared in the academic journal is too comprehensive and too generic and hard to implement at the real business. So, they are writing and they are delivering the paper to more genomic management. So what we are really worrying about is 
not so many papers seriously discuss about the future of the data. This phase, understanding data and its features. Of course, on surface, patent is consisted of all this information. But the structure of the detailed data, especially the text data, are completely different contingent of the database. When we use the, uh, the US patent office data, when we use the uh, multiple patent office data, all the patent are little in the, uh, the native language. How to do it? And I am assigning the, uh, my student, one of the uh, co-author, to be the professional of this data understanding part. So the, uh, please look at the, uh, the summation in the bottom. Where data can be especially unstructured and chaotic, ignoring these preparatory phases can have disastrous effect on the caliber of insight obtained. Again, I don't expect business school students alone will do this project in the, uh, to enhance the uh, data understanding part. But to know the common language with which you can communicate with the data analyst should be equipped. And in the academic sense, of course, all the authors of the existing paper should be aware of this problem. So they can, so that they can, they want to surrender this issue and decided to use commercial database. And from now on, we will, as a kind of preparation for our further the, uh, explanation, I want to read the review, the, uh, what is the uh, AI approach to what the their mining is all about. As you can see, the, uh, in principle, the uh, data mining of the AI use for the uh, data mining can be classified and it can be break down into five functions. As you can see, to know the relationship, to set a rule, and the, uh, to create a kind of function, and the, uh, to provide distribute tree and the cluster, And if we are used the uh, stats term, association can be expressed used by using the term correlation. And estimation and forecasting should be based on prediction or regression, in other words. And grouping can be classified into classification and a cross range. The published paper more or less creates all of these functions and all of this approach and to deliver more integrated view of the subject matter. And what is the association application? As you can see in this slide, 
although the term may be quite new, but association application itself is quite simple. As you can see in the left top, it's for finding hidden relationship or pattern in data because attribute appear simultaneously. So that's why I told you in the prior slide, it can be the uh, changed by the term correlation. And as for example, by historical transaction known that people buy bread also buy butter, it's a very famous rule of the application the association rule. Although it's very simple, yeah, but Amazon's recommendation system is in principle is built on this association loop. Although the association loop is more sophisticated and they are featuring deep learning and the neural network, meaning the multi-layer, but business school students do not need to know their in-depth knowledge about the uh, application of the neural network or the machine learning algorithm itself. But you can say the, uh, all of the recommendation system are based on association rule. And when you first e-commerce shopping site, Although you may receive some recommendation, but the, uh, the portal site could not learn your own preference. But the, uh, those portal sites allow the, uh, to study from your purchasing record and the, uh, is expected to enhance the accuracy of the recommendation. And second, estimation. Probably all of you are familiar with the, uh, this estimation itself. It's a kind of the uh, creating the uh, formula. And the, uh, probably as you can see on the right, although again, the uh, Uber VH is more sophisticated version but the, uh, like the Amazon's recommendation, in principle, what they are doing is estimation. And third, sometimes the, uh, the student may be confused the difference between estimation and forecasting, but these two have somewhat completely different the uh, focal point. Forecasting has specific feature about time states, Me meaning that forecasting is more dynamic in nature. So the uh, the investment banking and the uh, investment fund the uh, manager will use the uh, the neural network. Again, it's a kind of the uh, simulation of the uh, brain motion of the uh, the neuron in brain, and the, uh, to develop very sophisticated forecasting the uh, platform. And four, classification. Probably when it comes to this, the, the plain version of the classification, I think AGBS the, uh, is offering the, uh, the license of this SPSS or something. So you can do this. And this classification application 
try to group data into predetermined categories. And in most general sense, all the attributes has to be numeric with nominal, but the, uh, the label has to be nominal. This is the basic structure of the addition tree. Again, no need to understand in depth about classification rule itself, but I hope you will keep in your brain the, uh, what I believe in the left-hand side in order to understand what the classification is all about. And finally, Lastly, as you can see on the left, clustering try to group data into groups or clusters based on some common feature of the characteristic. The sharp difference between grouping and the clustering is in the second, whether we have some predetermined level or not. Clustering does not necessarily need predetermined level for each. Just to put all data and specify the number of the cluster and not your SPSS. So, in applying this, your creativity is highly expected to decide number of the K, which group, which cluster you want to divide all the data. Of course, there is some benchmark from the uh, AI or the statistical perspective. Business students are expected to be more creative in deciding the uh, a good number of the cluster because that is just the stats. They don't consider the backlog. But if you cannot acknowledge the very basics, at least in practice, because you have to be expected to be scientific if you are plan planning to use the uh, K means as part of your analytical part of your master thesis or something, you are expected to refer the uh, some statistical threshold. But in reality, those automatic the, uh, difference will lead to the, uh, the shrink or the, uh, the very disappointing the, uh, decision making. So be great, especially when you are planning to use the uh, clustering, especially when the, uh, you want to do full customer segmentation. And those applications of the AI can be conducted by combining or by alone the, uh, the metrics and the approach that I just briefed. But how about others? I do abstract description and crime, all are fixed there. And probably some of you are very familiar with the post viewer, but of course we shouldn't stop at this point. But if you are the layman or the novice of the text mining, 
I strongly recommend to be the very good use of the post viewer at first. And to let something expose from the numerous text data. So what we are doing with text is to make unstructured structure. It's impossible, at least with a small number of the data. I, when I say small, it doesn't mean 20 or 30 letter, 10,000 or something. It's too small. And if you will be very familiar with how both viewer classify the uh, the text and the uh, to associate the text and the keyword, you will soon be able to imagine how the uh, AI are doing the uh, image recognition. Let's say the uh, before coming here, yeah, I start the subscription of the, uh, the Kindle Unlimited. And I, when I try to look for the, uh, to, to subscribe the uh, nonfiction data, nonfiction book, the Kindle suggests the, uh, the picture of the AI generated beautiful lady. The point is, the AI generated the uh, picture or the, uh, the beautiful lady is based on the Boss Viewers Association. Because by doing some image recognition and the number of the, uh, the viewing of some particular picture, AI is studying the, uh, some, the uh, common loop for the, uh, the liked girl or something. So, even if you cannot understand the mathematical part of the association loop, if you are familiar with the post viewer, you can safe to say the generation of the, uh, the beautiful lady picture and the, uh, some of the uh, accident image are based on the similar loop that you are doing on the post viewer. Okay? and some other explanation. Providing the explanation so far, the exhibit featured in this slide are the very typical example to feature an AI for patent analysis. Networking, the yeah, grouping, and the other plotting, something. Okay. And providing that, yeah, we go to the main tier stream again and the uh, answering the research question number two, algorithm and the technique used for patent analysis. And it's applied the uh, many, many different AI techniques are applied and the, uh, because as you can easily imagine, the uh, AI technique evolved a lot in the last few years. Although our time frame, the sampling time frame is just five years, we can recognize sharp the uh, transformation in terms of the, uh, the applied method. For instance, as you can see, k means that I introduced in the, the few slides before, was one of the main the, uh, the common approach. But less and less paper do not use k means published in recent years. Later, they want to use more stochastic the, uh, the grouping approach. Again, I Introduce you, K means demand. 
authors have to determine before a priori the number of the cluster. Okay. So we stress probabilistic pattern recognition as the other recent the trend. And of course, I am not recommending to make this as a kind of the uh, the research topic, but we are planning to do with some others who are interested in the other uh, patent application, which will be useful to do the, uh, the patent analysis on the deterministic approach and the probabilistic approach. Just from the technical perspective, probabilistic approach and the probabilistic pattern recognition should be more unbiased and free from bias. But free from bias approach does not always deliver better suggestion. That's one of our current research idea in the uh, research project that we will conduct sometimes in the near future. Okay, so next. Answer to research question number three. Database used in patent analytics. As you can see, many of the paper, the majority of the paper use the uh, US patent database simply because the number of the patent data is largest among the uh, three database. But as you can see, Doent database, Doent Innovation Index, I differ as a company name, Planibay, is very popular as well because it covers almost all the patent not only from the, uh, the patent from four major countries, US, Japan, China, and the Europe, plus the, uh, some data from Malaysia and some data from Indonesia or some other country as well, even from some country in, from Africa. And all the data are translated into English. So that's why, although it's a little bit expensive, but the, uh, it follows the uh, USPTO data. Again, we can in this as a researcher, be from bias and the uh, free from the other uh, problem inherent in the uh, data understanding and the uh, data cleaning or something. And the main message for young business students here is when you start to work, be aware, although there may be some similar, at least semi seemingly similar database will be available. Some may be free. Some may charge cost, but in the age of AI data or the, in the age of big data, you have to be aware database selection will have huge impact on your conclusion. Again, you are not expected to be so familiar with the algorithm 
or the uh, statistical the uh, deployment of the, uh, some specific technique. But you need to keep asking the, uh, the data vendor uh, to understand the very feature of each database. Actually, in one of the uh, very small research projects that I assigned to the, our graduate student a few years ago, I made the, uh, our student to use the same stream, same keyword stream, let's say AI or the uh, Gleam or anything, and to do the same the, uh, the pattern set on USPTO data and the door web and to see the, uh, how that image may differ or not. Although it may be meaningless set, at, at seemingly, but this is very important because when you start to work at the company and the, uh, some may and to think the data does not affect so much about conclusion, but never selection disclosure. So that's why the reviewers to this paper was very interested in the, uh, the pros and cons about the, uh, the selection of the one specific the, uh, database and request us to write more, but uh, we write the, uh, extensively, the uh, reviewers suddenly change their mind and to cut the argument and move to the uh, next paper. <laughs> but again, yeah, as a business person, this is very important. And fourth question, the, uh, the tools used for patent analytics. As you can see, the, uh, I'm not sure whether you have experience to use Delphi or R and the uh, post viewer as well, but what I want to tell you from this is, even the published paper in a top quality journal, the authors does not use highly specialized and the very professional analytics letter. The applied methodology itself is very common and the, you can easily imitate. Okay. And the, In each paper, the, uh, what visualization are more likely to be presented? As you can see, many paper refer to the company country-wide classification as well as assigning based assigning wise the uh, comparison. Country based means which country is very active in developing one specific technology. The assigning means which company are very likely to dominate in specific technological area. And IPC may be the new word to you. And the, uh, let me briefly explain it. IPC is an international patent classification code. And the, uh, for instance, let's say, we are investigating the uh, technological landscape related to AI. But when it comes to make the AI more visible, the AI technology will be classified in many different the uh, technological subclass. Let's say the uh, 
just imagine crisp DM. Some technology is very particular about the uh, data cleaning or the extracting some data. Some may be about the uh, visualization of something. In that case, although those technology and the, those patents are broadly say a part of the AI technology, but assigned graphs may be some sometimes different. So using the IPC code is used by the, uh, the authors as a kind of proxy of the future, the uh, hot technological area. And some other quick explanation why we need to do be capable at least to do a little familiar with the big data. And the uh, patent has a big data, in other words. As you can see in the left, there were about 3.4 million published patent application in 2021. Even the world was in COVID-19. And this number is expected to increase in the next five years, double. Meaning that 7 million the patent application will be published globally. impossible to make the manual analysis. So we are ready to be equipped with big data analysis. And you can soon understand to analyze the huge data it's impossible to conduct on your laptop. And so big data and cloud computing as a twins. And the, uh, because cloud computing is supporting the, uh, the analyzers more rich in the uh, computational asset. So, although this question is answered for future the research with IT or AI researchers, but it may be worth to the, uh, keep in memo, even for the business student. As you can see on the right hand side, Although patent data is uniquely suited to big data tools and techniques, and in order to make the, uh, the data analysis process faster, we have to be very keen which the, uh, the cloud computational service we will subscribe. But there is no specific difference the, uh, in terms of the selection of the particular cloud computing service of something by the review by the authors. Although we did not write explicitly, we convinced ourselves the, uh, the chemistry between the type of the, the patent data and the uh, any type of the cloud computing service may be the, uh, one of the future very promising the research topic in the uh, IT or AI field. And this will be analyzed with some kind of experiment. Okay, some final work. I hope you can have one of two takeaway the, uh, my lecture so far, but going back to the, uh, the some comment 
and the uh, the line made before moving into the main body. I want to say something more. First, all the methods and techniques presented today are very common. We are not arguing and proposing the, uh, something new technique. Although we are trying to the, uh, develop and the propose something new. And if you will be equipped with the, uh, the very generic AI technique, you are ready to conduct patent analysis. No need to study some additionally, additionally about yeah, some specific data the yeah, analytical tool. So if you will be AI the expert or the uh, AI good AI users, you can be a good patent analyst as well. So be proud of it. Second, you can make any of the research debut to some extent. If you can collect patent data, and the source code from the uh, chat GPT. So if you are determined to develop and to build your career as the uh, technology analyst, the uh, master the, uh, period will be the very good time the, uh, to, to mimic this process itself. And third, patent is a big data, as I repeat to express. AI or machine learning professional can apply sophisticated method and deliver new insight. However, as we insisted, the current academic achievement in the field failed to well articulate patent analytics in the business understanding context. So I believe there are huge market potential as a future talent of the future leader. If you are ready to spend your time to enhance your, um, your competence, to define the business understanding and communicate with the uh, data analyst and the, uh, to make the uh, AI or the uh, data analytical, the uh, data mining project successfully. And I forget to put the last slide, but the, uh, in order to be more, a little bit more familiar with the uh, patent data, if you have free time and uh, you have nothing to do and the, uh, play with chat GPT uh, to put some of the business idea, if you already develop the, uh, some business process or something as a part of your business final year project to put your idea and the ask chat GPT, I want to apply the, uh, the patent with the following the uh, business idea. Chat GPT kindly give you the, uh, the model patent application document. So let's try. But anyhow, as I told you, all through my lecture, during my stay, I will repeatedly refer the other uh, patent issue again and again. So if you will attend all my lecture and the uh, hope you will be more familiar with the patent, of the concept of patent and the uh, how to use the patent. And that's all from me. And the, uh, I hope you can get something from my lecture today. Thank you. Yes. Mm. 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 How does AI would help in the business? Is there any specific problem to be sure that we can do practice? Mm. Mm. Depends on the quality of the AI. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, probably 
if you are saying the AI as a time the very generic one, the chat GPT or the free AI, what they can help is to propose free source code. No, no need to design and no need to develop the, uh, the application procedure, let's say K means or something from the scratch. Correct, 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 correct. Yes. <laughs> so, um, if I can make a couple of that, you mentioned about the good method. Is there any chance? You can use this as a consider a lot of other things when you have a sense space inside. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Let's say, for instance, patent site is a very good, but they don't cover the uh, Thailand and Malaysia, but include Indonesia. As such, if you remember the, uh, what I say at the very beginning, we wrote this paper for the patent analysis beginner to try to start the patent analysis business in developing country. So it may be very good practice, let's say, to use the, uh, the, the WAN or the patent side and then to say something, but you cannot apply for this, let's say, using the patent side and the, uh, to give some the, uh, good implication for Malaysian company who plan to work the, uh, the, make the, uh, some, the, uh, the business in Malaysian context. And the WIPO and the, some other public database have many, many typo. Not the WIPO, typo. <laughs> and they are very difficult the, uh, to so the, uh, the similar patent and the uh, their family data is completely low sometimes. Such, mm, there are many, many. Mm. Mm, probably Google patent. It's a, just a kind of assortment from the uh, USPTO. So <laughs> I'm not sure why USPTO does not sue Google. <laughs> I think the, uh, some of the uh, lecturers as a part of the innovation study the, uh, and to let company to make this mandate to let the uh, study use the patent data. If the very simple pattern data will be. Hopefully, had it just falls in the old course. So, if that's the population, is there any certain database that you can see? Uses the, uh, we can save to use the domain, of course and the uh, MIPO database as well. Of course, there are many lacking data, but the, uh, I'm not sure whether the, uh, the, any professional patent data provider the, uh, specializing in the Malaysia, Malaysia, but if some of your future students will start up the, uh, their own company and to start those the, uh, very specific data, there may be very huge potential, probably my poll is looking for someone who will be able to collaborate. But the problem is many, many typo. Mm. 
Hmm. The point is pretty simple. As I just told you, SLR is to create some catalog. If we cannot find something in the catalog, that may be the chance for new product. Yes. But the catalog, if we see the uh, literature review, is a kind of catalog. Traditional literature review paper is a kind of a catalog prepared by the uh, select show. It's highly biased. We don't know whether other new material is available or not. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Mm. 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 Okay. But how far? 